Hi friends, and welcome to Ames Public Library. And let's paint. I'm Jill Wells, contemporary visual artist, and today I'm gonna be taking you through a guided foliage painting, a little bit of, you could say, a bouquet. So different foliage, and we're gonna to start to talk about how you can use different plant life to tell a story in your artwork. So let's jump right into it. Using your Ames Public Library starter kit, you're going to open it up. We've got watercolor paper here, and you've got a kit that also talks a little bit about what foliage you can choose. So I've started here with Monstera. We've got a couple different palms, and we're just going to kind of collage some of these together. So this is just a basic idea. You can collage any of these different pieces of foliage together. So it's really cool because you get to choose. So I've collaged these different pieces of foliage together, this bouquet, and once we get the drawing all complete, we'll go ahead and start with watercolor. So with watercolor, it's very fluid. We're going to be going through a couple different techniques. We'll be using what's called wet on wet, so we can get some beautiful bleeds and a very organic natural flow of the colors together. The last part of the drawing that I'm doing here, these are the stems that will be two palms. So the palms, I'll just actually, the individual leaves that come off that stem, I'm gonna use just directly with paint and water. So I like to start with the background and you can pick either of the different pieces, but I'm gonna start right here in the middle. I like to start with the background because that way I don't have to worry about if anything in the foreground um, covers it up. And so I'm saturating with water one of the pieces of foliage in the back. So then that way once I get paint in there, it just kind of bleeds and the paint just flows and kind of does its own thing. And I like to alternate colors between warm and cool. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a warm tone here. So combining a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. And you'll see that the water that's already on the surface just pulls the paint and the pigment and it just bleeds across. And so we're gonna just let that one sit and we'll move right next door. And I think for this one, I'm going to do a little bit more yellow. Again, saturating that surface. And this is one of the reasons why I love watercolor so much. If there's ever anything that you want to explore with it and just kind of see what things do and you're really curious about accidents and and what beauty can come from that, watercolor allows you to play around with that and it's, it's safe like that. So it's very airy and ethereal. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown with that yellow. And we'll come back in towards the end and do contrast. And then continuing to move across the background, and we'll do the foreground last. This you could almost call a middle ground. It does sit behind the Monstera, which is in the foreground. So each one of these pieces of foliage has a symbol or symbolic kind of reference or meaning, and those do vary. Uh, through different cultures and regions. So it's really cool. You can look up um, specifically for yourself. The guide in the kit just gives you some basic symbols or symbolic meaning behind each one of these. So if you never thought about foliage like that, it starts to have that conversation. It's really cool. And maybe you start to think about um, why people give certain um, flowers or plants to people or why they have them in their yard. 
why they use them during certain ceremonies. And a lot of it is because of those symbolic meanings. So again, we're alternating doing a cool next to a warm. And I like to do that because then each piece stands out and they don't really, they work harmoniously together, but they don't get um, foggy or um, disappear next to one, of, one another. So I love that reaction when you put it right into the water. You see it fan out like that. And so we might have some bleeds that go outside the lines, which I would say embrace those. This is a very organic medium. And so accidents will happen and it's nice because they're very beautiful. And the negative space will work wonderfully in the composition. So those areas that you can see the pigment has been left out. So switching to the banana leaf palm, we're gonna again saturate that area. And we've got a pretty warm green next to it. So for this one, I think I'm going to do some blues in there. And you can hear the surface. It's sometimes scratchy. Um, if you're working without music um, in the video, there may be music. So it's nice that you have a little bit of a, an experience that's more than visual when you work with this medium because you can hear it as well. So that's really beautiful. And you can just run the side of the brush down that kind of perimeter line of the drawing. When you work with the side of the brush, you get a lot more coverage than just working with the tip of the brush. And so you can actually turn one brush into two when you really learn um, how to move and manipulate it as a tool. So if you don't have a lot of brushes and you're starting to just kind of build your collection, one brush can actually become sometimes three. And add just a little bit of yellow in there. All right, so Monstera in the foreground, I'm going to move to next, and you can kind of see that the blue right now from the banana palm behind it is bleeding into it, so that's gorgeous. We're gonna work with that. And with the Monstera, there's these kind of holes in the leaf that's just naturally occurring. So that's fun. I like being able to use the negative space and just not paint those areas. So they act as those little holes in the leaf. I'm going to go in with a warmer green and anything that is lighter is going to advance. Anything that's darker is going to recede. So once we get each one of these full of the colors that we want, we're going to go through and add that contrast in the background. If you run directly down the vein line of the foliage, it'll naturally kind of fill in with the water bleed the rest of the actual leaf that you're working on. And it looks a little bit more um, organic to like what naturally occurs. Those different veins that run throughout the leaf. 
And if you ever feel like something's dried, all you need to do is just add water. It'll reactivate it and you can push the pigment around. And I'm just running along the bottom here of each one of the different pieces on this leaf. And then just pushing the paint around. We're gonna add some browns in here in a moment on the palms on the side. So that'll give us even more contrast with color. And the palette is very neutral, very soft. You can play around with the palette. You can actually do these in any different color. So they don't have to be naturally occurring of what you might feel like you'd see in nature. Um, you can do a whole rainbow collage here of colors. And we're going to go up that main vein again and a little bit more water and just have it bleed out. So as you choose what foliage you'd like to collage together or leave individual, you can start to tell a story. And oftentimes we're going to go into the palm here on the left. And the way that I like to do this, I'll come back to the story and the narrative, but I like to use just the tip of the brush. And then as I start, then I'll push and kind of fan it out. So you see where it connects to the stem and then pushing down. This is probably one of my favorite parts because you don't have your drawing. So it builds a little bit of self-trust and it's like sometimes a little scary because you're like, oh, I don't want to maybe make a mistake. I think that sometimes, but it's fun because it ends up looking beautiful. So yeah, the story that you can tell, you can talk with people about. If they don't ask, you can tell them, oh, I chose this plant because it symbolizes something like longevity or peace or prosperity. I use the lid as a mixing area. Even though watercolors are so transparent, you can still mix some really beautiful variations. They don't have to be really opaque. So opacity is looking at how thick, how much light or how little light comes through the pigment. And sometimes that's the thickness of the paint. And so this will be the last one on the right hand side. We've got a palm and then we've got a roca palm. So they have a different variance and you'll see here on your little kit sheet. You can talk about some of the history behind those as well. And these are just basically the tip of the brush. So usually goes very quick. They're super thin. They have a tendency sometimes to overlap a little bit easier. So you can do that. You can have them almost merging into one. And we'll put some blues in there too, right at the bottom. So we've got our overall composition, got some beautiful bleeds. We're gonna actually go in with our Bic pen and in the kit, it really doesn't matter what Bic pen that you use. I just would say if you um, are going for this graphic look, that's why I chose the black instead of the blue. And you'll notice that sometimes if you get into an area where the uh, watercolor is still wet, then the uh, actual uh, pen will kind of stop working for a moment. So I like to just go in with an outline. And this starts to build a little bit of contrast. 
We'll go back in with pigment once we're done. But this is the kind of the fun drawing side of it that you can really make some decisions on what you'd like the shapes to really fully develop to look like. So the monstera right now on this right hand side, for me, it feels like it's starting to become one with the palm behind it. So this is my opportunity to really go in and separate those two. And then once we get in with some of the really dark blues and blacks behind there, they'll pop. So I'm kind of skipping around because I can see what's dry and what is still needing a little bit more dry time. And from the original here, you can tell that I like to just leave some areas out. I don't like to outline the whole thing. So it's again, really cool. You get to choose how you want the look of your piece to be. You can outline everything in detail. And once you kind of get the just and the basis, or the basics down, you can really go to town on how you want things to end up looking. Take time or you can do a little less time. So I'm gonna leave that as it is now. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more contrast. Contrast is probably one of my favorite things. For someone who never really did well with like third dimension when it comes to sculptural work, I found that using um, the contrast with lights and darks in 2D work allowed me to kind of get that third dimension where things felt like they were advancing or receding and like really popping out. So if you ever felt like you struggled with that, then you really might like this portion because it helped me really get, to get that quality. So I'm just going in behind and I'm letting it set. So I'm not fanning anything out yet. And hopefully what we'll see here is the foreground really starts to feel like the foreground and the background really feels like the background. So if you go into these little nooks, basically at the bottom where the, the foliage piece is really um, overlap or touch, then those areas, if you hit those first, usually you'll see that pop right away. And then you can actually do the opposite where you come in on the top of each one. And then just give it a little bit of an outline. And then we'll go in with some water and what I call, we'll kind of fan that out. So you reactivate it and then I'll dry it and then I just start to push and pull it and move it out a little bit so it blends and then you can run it alongside and you'll hear that kind of scratching sound if the music's not too loud. That's a technique that I call scumbling. Um, some people call it dry brushing. So we're just running it along the perimeter where the two leaves touch and then letting it bleed out. Again, just using plain water once you reactivate it. It looks like it has color, but it's just that pigment that's already on the surface, that black. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. You can have fun with it kind of at this point because you'll see what you'd like and then you'll see what you don't like. And you can actually remove the paint from the surface with water. So if there's an area you feel like, I put that paint down, I don't really like it, you can just start to use the water to remove it. 
So it acts like an eraser. So now I'm just adding a little bit of color just wherever I feel like I'd like it. So this is a little bit of brown in with the black. We've almost got all the contrast from behind the Monstera. I'm gonna use a little bit of blue in with that because I think it'll look really pretty. So a little bit of contrast here on this main vein. Running along the bottom, giving a little bit of shadow on the bottom of the leaf. I'm just using a little bit of brown. And then we'll go back in with our big pen and do a little bit more of the veining and outline. So I think this one's pretty dry, so we'll start there. Just coming down the middle. And you can bend and curve and twist these lines any way you want. So this is the banana leaf. It's got quite a bit of veining and they all kind of run up. So I just do a little bit. Come in on the side with a little bit. So I like just with this piece anyway, keeping it kind of graphic and then some detail here at the top. So kind of making it seem like the top of the leaf is kind of folding. It's got a little bit of bend, a little bit of movement. And then if you feel like you want a lot more contrast between the two where they overlap on these leaves, you can go in with your pen and just literally draw that out so they feel like one is definitely in front of the other. And I think this one should be dry. I'm just kind of twisting and turning, coming down the middle, and then connecting some of these. And here on the edge, you can kind of fan out, so to the right and to the left, a little bit heavier on your line quality. So it feels like um, there's almost a separation in that section on the outside of the leaf. So you can just play around with that. You don't have to do that if you don't like that look. And then moving again here. This one's a little wet still, so you might find if you're moving along like I am here that it's starting to stall, and that's okay. You can usually just use a spare piece of paper from the library kit, print out, Just kind of doodle just to get that going, that ink flowing again. And picking and choosing as we go. Picking and choosing where we want those veins and those lines to be. So we're just about done. We're doing our last little bit of contrast on these palms and then we're gonna do the little open holes on the leaves. And after that, you can stick with it and play around more if you'd like to develop it further. On the palms, we're gonna go in with the tip of the brush and just do some bottom contrast on each one of those leaves.
And again, you can pick and choose where you want the contrast, how much you like. Each one's gonna vary. So if you do a set of these, let's say you maybe wanna use them for greeting cards. Uh, maybe if you would like to frame them, if you're doing a series of prints, you can separate each piece of foliage. So instead of doing a collage and a bouquet, you can just focus on one individually and highlight just that one piece of foliage that is. And then maybe you do a second painting that has more than one, or you just continue with focusing on one piece of foliage at a time. Those are really beautiful. You can do like sets of three, have them somewhere in the house or in your office, you can have them framed. And again, great gift ideas for Christmas, birthdays, you name it, or any holidays that you celebrate. So again, that contrast, once you get it going, I think it just really makes each piece kind of come to life. So I'm running just along the bottom. And if you feel like, oh, that one wasn't steady, it kind of goes off, I just encourage you to embrace wherever the line goes. And you can always make a new leaf out of it. You can thicken the line quality. So that's really pretty. So we've got a couple open areas here where there's negative space. We're gonna use those as the holes in the leaf. And this one was just kind of a natural bleed, which I like, so I'm gonna use that. And then we've got a bunch up here. I'm going to make one more at the bottom, kind of a little tiny one, and then maybe one right next to it. So just after you have that outline with whatever color you like, you can use black for the outline of each one of those little holes in the leaf. I'm just coming in with a little bit of water and bleeding that out. You can leave some hard lines. So again, that contrast, and it looks really beautiful. And when you're all done with each one of those, you can go in with your Bic and outline them even further. So there's more contrast. And it really feels like there is Maybe it, that leaf behind it, or just the shadow behind it. Maybe it's sitting on a table and you're starting to arrange it. So it starts to tell a little bit of a story that way. But storytelling oftentimes is what brings people into your artwork and what connects us ourselves as creatives to the artwork. You can provide as much depth into the piece with the narrative and if there's really no exploration that you've done with storytelling in your artwork, I think foliage is a really beautiful way to begin exploring storytelling. Just the combination of what you're choosing can be a really powerful thing and it's just a beautiful element of nature. So I'm gonna try, I have the second big pen here. See if I can get those little outlines a little bit cleaner. All right. So as we're kind of coming to the finish line here on this piece, I just want to say I'm really happy with how this looks. I love how the watercolor has just kind of come together. 
done its own thing. I have just want to say I've enjoyed being able to spend time with the process and spend time with you guys here today at the Ames Public Library. And I think I'm, I'm good for the day. I like this piece. And if you've enjoyed uh, Let's Paint and the Watercolor Bouquet, please share with us on social media and any tips or tricks that you have of your own. We'd love to hear them.